Hope everybody is doing well. I'm Adam Clark here live in the studio and I'm going to make sure everything is running right. So I'm going to hit this play and make sure I've got everything going correctly. And uh, I'm going to actually look and see if I can read your comments. If you have any sort of uh, questions or concerns about anything that I'm talking about today. So here we go. I've got the comment section up. I'm going to click on it. So there we go. So you can ask away. So here's what we're thinking. Winds are around 20 to 40 miles per hour. We've got a few gusts that could get up to around 60 to 65 miles per hour, especially around Orangeburg and Clarendon County. Two to six inches of rain, that really hasn't changed. Some flooding is possible, locally heavy rain at times, and then isolated tornadic activity. That has been bumped up. Um, we've got a higher risk of tornadic activity, especially in our eastern counties, and I'll show you all of this in this hit. So that's all to come. So let's take a look at what's going on. Uh, heavy rain, that's a high risk. Wind, high risk of that. Um, and then tornadic activity, moderate, but still there. And these tornadoes that usually happen within the storms, um, uh, they are usually pretty uh, brief. Thanks, Philip. I will keep you informed. And they're usually on the weaker side, but uh, still can cause all sorts of damage. And if you're in a mobile home or out and about, you can it can hurt you really bad. So um, we're thinking that happens right around lunchtime tomorrow. We'll start to see some feeder bands move in. Um, but really into the mid-afternoon, that's when the heavier rain comes in, right around 2 to 3 o'clock. And so winds and flooding, primary concerns there. Tornadic activity from noon to about midnight or so. And then it starts to taper off as we head into the early morning hours there. A uh, little bit better, but still very gusty winds for us. So there is a flood watch in effect uh, for a good, good uh, portion, all of the Midlands. Uh, fl uh, flooding is possible, flash flooding possible to 2 o'clock Thursday. There's a tropical storm watch. Gusty winds and heavy rain for Sumter, Clarendon, Calhoun, and Orangeburg counties. So uh, that lasts until 11 o'clock. And as you can see, this is our risk of uh, severe weather from the Storm Prediction Center. And it has Orangeburg and Clarendon County under a slight risk of severe weather and the area shaded in green that's a marginal level one so this includes our tornadic risk so that yellow in Orangeburg and Clarendon and Southern uh, Sumter and Calhoun uh, that's where we're really watching for the turning of the winds and and the possibility of tornadic activity um, so let's take a look at the future cast here it is around four in the morning notice not a lot of activity at four in the morning and then at nine it gets a little more active at nine to about twelve o'clock we're seeing some of these feeder bands come in but the wind still eleven miles per hour nothing too bad at around noon by two o'clock it starts to get a bit more interesting we've got uh, around Lexington County I got a question about Lexington County yes we're seeing the rain and uh, some breezy winds around two 26 mile per hour gusts in Orangeburg now by five o'clock it gets way more interesting, especially even in Lexington and Columbia with gusts up to about 30 miles per hour. We're looking at 40 miles per hour in Orangeburg and 36 in Manning. Gusts up to about 50 now at uh, 7 o'clock. Now, notice the sharp cutoff. Now, that's going to happen throughout the Midlands somewhere. It was looking like it was a little farther to the east yesterday, but notice it's a little farther to the west now. We've got those gusts up to 32 miles per hour in Columbia, 29 in Lexington, but still seeing some gusts around 26 in Newberry, 29 in Winsboro, and around 36 Sumter. But um, this model now shows about uh, 53 mile per hour gusts, 55. It was showing 65, so it did reduce that a little bit, but that still can knock down trees and cause some damage. 36 in Columbia, 34 around Lexington. So hopefully that helps you out there. By midnight, it has most of it pushing east, but again, this is just one model run. We could see some activity well into early morning Thursday, but still some breezy winds into your Thursday morning. So let's talk about rainfall. For the next two days, we're looking at about 
two to six inches of rain and that's why we've got the watch across most of the Midlands is all of the Midlands of South Carolina so flood watch in effect um, if you see a flooded roadway please turn around don't drown so here's the European model if you want a specific number um, 6.7 in Manning 4.6 around Orangeburg and uh, and in Chester around three quarters of an inch but you notice there's this sharp gradient that could shift to the west a little it could shift down to the south and east but no some folks are gonna get a lot of rain out of this and it's gonna be likely some folks here in the Midlands that's what we can tell you so that's what you have to prepare for now as far as the system goes we're trying to watch for an eye to develop it's currently a category 2 storm and it's got plenty of warm water out ahead of it temperatures in the ocean there are 88 just to the north and just over to the east there are 86 and it needs 80 degree water so it's way warm enough for development in fact it's so warm it will help amplify because we're not seeing a lot of upper level winds that tear apart these storms that's not happening so it's got uh, a free form just it can strengthen all it wants to to a category three storm by around tomorrow morning it's making landfall right around eight o'clock or so eight to ten I would say as a category three storm at two in the morning it's up to 115 miles per hour winds and then by two o'clock in the afternoon after it goes inland it's got uh, winds at 85 miles per hour now as we head into Thursday around 2 in the morning it's uh, up to around 60 miles per hour and then it continues over to the east Thursday at 2 o'clock 50 mile per hour winds so it weakens a little bit but uh, still we're looking at 60 mile per hour winds here around Charleston and all the way towards Orangeburg there in portions of Clarendon County now here's the spaghetti plot it's showing everything this is what you know the whole whole cone is based on uh, it's still bringing it through the coastal areas of South Carolina throughout Wednesday and into early morning Thursday. As far as tropical winds go, over 110 mile per hour winds in portions of Florida. Here in South Carolina, we've got our gusts up to around uh, 58 to 73 miles per hour uh, and around Charleston, even up towards Georgetown County. And I'll zoom in a little bit closer here. You can see 39 to 57 mile per hour winds just south of Columbia, Orangeburg, Florence, just south of uh, Augusta. Now let's talk about storm surge because we're talking over over nine feet. Some folks could get 12 feet of a storm surge in por portions of Florida. Here in South Carolina we could see some areas around Hilton Head around three feet or more uh, and around Hilton Head and Charleston. So that is a possibility there. Um, let's see if there's any other questions. For Chester, yep, we're still looking at uh, some heavier rain for you guys, but not quite as much as, as folks in uh, Orangeburg. Um, so here's the long range future cast. And what I'm doing here is putting the, the track of uh, Edalia on to this model run. So you can kind of see, let me put my clicker here. So you can see it's a category three, six in the morning. It's making landfall. And I also like to put this on because you can see the the cone is very narrow you know you see this is just the forecast of the center so folks that think that oh I'm not in the cone I'm not going to see impacts but look it's raining all the way in Miami and all the way towards uh, the the panhandle of Florida and we're starting to see rain also up here in Georgia and that's at 7 in the morning so that's why I do this and uh, as we head towards the three o'clock hour yep we've got our rain and our wind starting to pick up the lines here are lines of equal pressure so those are isobars and the tighter they are the stronger the wind and that's what we're looking at throughout the overnight period and this is the European model bringing in that heavier rain right around seven o'clock for your Thursday morning and then it pushes it out to the east so that's why I'm saying you know this is the European model I just showed you a different model the in-house one that kind of sweeps it out of here a little quicker it could linger a little longer now it, you can see the path is very similar 
to the actual hurricane track there. And it continues over to the east and then high pressure builds and it's gorgeous after Friday. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, my goodness. Low 80s, low 60s, and then 86 degrees Monday by Labor Day, a high of 89, and we're in the upper 80s Tuesday and Wednesday, staying dry into next week. So that's what we're dealing with with uh, Idalia. And there's the storm surge, tropical winds. I'm going to back it up and uh, show you the, the track once again. So I'll see if there's anything else from you guys watching from Abbeville. All right, Abbeville's there. Um, you're welcome. West Columbia, we could see gusts around 30 to 40 miles per hour in West Columbia. Crystal, and you're welcome, Nietzsche. All right, so making landfall, category three storm, moves up to the north as we head into uh, Thursday in the early morning hours it's it's right really close to us as uh, with 60 mile per hour winds then continues over to the east as it does so uh, and, and kind of dissipates a little bit but still Sunday we are still got it off the coast with 50 mile per hour winds so it just won't go away right it's, it just won't leave us alone and again then again here's the the spaghetti plot showing all the models just two of them bring it closer to Columbia but most right around the coast of um, of uh, of South Carolina and also Georgia. So this is along, along the lines of what we were showing last Friday, this last Friday with the European model. It said mm, it's right along the coast of South Carolina. So there you go. And Chesterfield, I got a question about Chesterfield. Rain for Batesburg, uh, two to three inches, maybe even four in Batesburg. Um, Chesterfield, you're going to see some strong winds and heavy rain as well. So um, again, here's the tropical winds, uh, and around 38 miles per hour. That's nothing to sneeze at. I know it's like uh, it's it's under. It's the green right there, but uh, sustained, just constant like wind. And that's going to cause some problems. So make sure you've got your prepare. This is the time to prepare. Make sure that uh, you're ready for a long power outage, and also your chainsaws ready for down trees. If you have a generator, gas it up. Um, have enough cash. Fuel and make sure that you're you're taken care of Calhoun County you're under a watch right now a tropical storm watch um, and that uh, Calhoun uh, Clarendon Orangeburg County and Sumter County tropical storm watch so you're under the gun with this system uh, coming up in about 10 minutes we've got Vaughn Gaskin on at 7 o'clock she'll on WIS she'll have all the latest and greatest uh, information for you and uh, I'll be back at 10 on the uh, CW and 10:30 as well and at 11 o'clock here on WIS we're going to be keeping our, our, our articles on our website all up to date um, and making sure everybody knows what's happening and when it's happening um, throughout the next uh, 48 hours. We've got a tropical system on the way. Uh, it's got plenty of warm water and as it moves up to the north it's a category three and a tropical storm by the time it reaches us. So I'm going to sign off right now and we will keep you informed right here at WIS. We have team coverage planned for tomorrow evening and even for Thursday morning as well. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching.